coming up on All Access. And the Dolphins have their fourth straight win over the Patriots. Like we are every week, win or loss, it's always on to the next week. That's what we're doing. So glad you're here. Too, too long. I've been trying to get him to come out for years and years. Chase, uh, who looks like he's going to be open here for a touchdown, and uh, does a nice job here. You can see the, the height that Sutton gets up with, gets his fingers on the ball, and, and breaks it up. So that really is the game winning play. Many mistakes in Miami doom the Patriots in the regular season opener. Hello and welcome to Patriots All Access presented by Geico. I'm Steve Burton. Sure, there were positives, but not enough as New England falls to 0-1 on the year. They hit the trail again this week to face Pittsburgh in the Steelers' home opener. Let's begin our show with a look back at the sights and sounds from week one in Miami, which began with an electric atmosphere, South Florida style. Dolphins have their fourth straight win over the Patriots. 
It's a season opening victory for Mike McDaniel in his first game as an NFL head coach. You can't win in this league with bad plays, and we just had too many bad plays. So there are the sights and sounds from the loss in Miami. Welcome to our Bob's Just Conference Studios, the Mike Reese and Paul Perillo, right out of the gate. Got to ask you this question. Did the Patriots let one get away? Was Miami beatable? Yeah, I mean, I thought Miami was the better team, really, for the most part. And, you know, it's, it's hard to overlook the three turnovers that the Patriots had. But, you know, at the same time, I don't think Miami played great. I don't think that's one of the Super Bowl-caliber teams in the AFC. But they did, they did avoid the mistakes, Mike, and I thought they were in control of the game. Really, from the time of that strip sack that made it 10-0, mm -hmm. I thought, really, they were in control of the game from there on out. I saw it a little bit differently, and I would say that the Patriots did let one get away. If you had told me, Paul, going in that Patriots would have held Miami to 13 points defensively, I would have said that's enough to win the game. Now, that being said, they got what they deserved. Right. Your minus three turnover differential, mm -hmm. you don't deserve to win the game. And to me, that's the bottom line. So I think it was very winnable. They just didn't do what they needed to do to win the game. In the post-game press conference, Bill Belichick talked about the game was pretty even except for a couple plays, two plays that were skewed. I just take those comments. Yeah, I mean, I think that what he's trying to do, I mean, they were surprising initially, but then I thought about it a little bit, and I think he's really trying to instill that into his team. I think he's showing some faith in his players and hoping that the players in turn might hear that and have a little faith in what they're doing on the other side. They are, they are probably close. I mean, they had a really impressive opening drive mm -hmm. to the season that results in a kind of a fluky interception that, that ends that drive. You know, I, I don't like playing the ifs and, and yeah. buts game, but, you know, that, that play easily could go incomplete or probably as resulting in a penalty, and then you're looking at it a little bit differently. I think he's just trying to keep them yeah. uh, on board and, and have a little faith. But I, think, I agree with, Mike, uh, with Bill on that, Mike. Yeah, but I think Paul makes a good point because it speaks to sort of where the, the team is right now, bigger picture. Like, they have a long way to go. Mm -hmm. um, and I think usually what I've heard from Bill over the years is, hey, one or two plays is what decides them, and we made them. Right. And we made them, and, and we won the game. that's what game comes down to, let's face it. And so the fact that the message just sounds a little bit different mm -hmm to me is a notable sort of approach from Bill that is maybe a little bit different than we've heard in the past. All right, guys, don't go far. We'll get to a little later on the show because we got the Pittsburgh Steelers coming up next. We'll be back with more Patriots All Access right after this. Coming up on All Access. We go one-on-one -on -one with one of the Patriots' newest captains, Dietrich Wise Jr. Uh, lead the team the best way I know how. That's by example and bringing the positive energy every day. And later, we travel to the Pacific Northwest and a glimpse into the unique relationship between owner and former player. Life is about special relationships. You watch the Patriots All Access. Patriots All Access is brought to you by Bank of America, the official bank of the New England Patriots. By Ace Ticket, where New England fans go for tickets to all their favorite events. Visit aceticket.com. By Pepsi, Patriots watching, Better with Pepsi. And by Putnam Investments. Putnam Investments and the New England Patriots. Proud partners committed to an active game plan on the field and off. The countdown is over and the NFL regular season is underway. I'm Tamara Brown from Patriots.com with your social media minute. The outcome may not have been what the Patriots wanted, but Patriots fans near and far joined together to cheer on the Patriots this season. The New England Revolution, Boston Bruins, Boston Celtics, and Boston Red Sox all took to their social media platforms to wish the Patriots good luck this season. The Patriots in return also told the Connecticut Sun to get it done as they tip off game one of the WNBA Finals. What was the most popular post the Patriots were tagged in in week one? It was from the Patriots fans. Who knew our fur friends would be our best dressed fans in week one? They were wearing Patriots jerseys, t-shirts, scarves, you name it, they were probably wearing it. We'll be back with more on the Social Media Minute, same time, same place, next week. Welcome back to All Access presented by Geico. Turn the page. That's exactly what the Patriots need to do to get back on track. Dan Rhodes tells us how the Patriots plan on doing just that. We begin 
with some good news. After missing his media availability after the Pats' opening day loss at Miami due to a back injury, Mac Jones was a full participant in practice with no issues. Everything feels good. Um, you know, just keeping it warm and throwing the football. And Jones completely downplayed the injury, saying this is basically life as a quarterback. So we always do whatever hurts during the game, just fix it and then play the next week. You expect to play on Sunday? Yeah. Good. Life in the NFL also means moving on. So there's no pity party for the 0-1 Patriots this week. You know, every time you lose a game, you never want to lose two in a row, I feel like. So we don't want to make it a habit of losing or a trend of losing. So definitely got to snap back now. I can't remember the last time we've gone three years without playing the Steelers. Seems like it's been you know, a team we use played every year. Sunday won't be easy as the Pats hit the road again this week, playing in Pittsburgh against the Steelers team that upset Super Bowl runner-up Cincinnati. That's a very intense place to play, especially the home opener. Um, it's going to be terrible tiles. They don't like you um, just because they love the Steelers. The Pats offense lost Ty Montgomery Sunday as he was placed on injured reserve. There was also an interception and a strip sack that led to a Dolphins touchdown. But Mac Jones believes the mistakes are fixable, and he's optimistic moving forward. Like I said, it's, it's week one, and we did a lot of good things out there, and uh, we're moving in the right direction in practice, and we feel confident about it, and um, we just got to go out there and do it, really. There's no talking to be done. The defense also did a lot of good things in Miami, but don't tell that to Matthew Judon. Uh, we don't really take no moral victories and be like, all right, we, well, we did this good, we did this good. Uh, we didn't do anything good enough to win. Since 2001, the Steelers are tied for the fourth best record in home openers in the NFL at 16 and five, trailing only Denver, Baltimore and Seattle. And oh, by the way, the team they're tied with the Patriots who open up a week from Sunday here at Gillette Stadium against Baltimore. For Patriots All Access, I'm Dan Roach. Hi, right, Dan Roach, thank you very much for joining me now is Patriot Captain, I like saying that, Captain Dietrich Wise Jr. Good to see you, my friend. Good to see you too, how you doing? Good, right out of the gate, what's the mood of this football team right now? We're focused, ready to get back, turn the page, um, like we are every week, win or loss, it's always on to the next week, and that's what we're doing. When you mention the word focus, what are you focused on? We're focused on the things that we did well, mm -hmm. and things that we need to improve so that we can both improve in, in, in our good areas and improving areas that we need to improve on, um, both sides of the ball. This year, voted captain. Yes, sir. Mm. What does that mean to you? It's a great feeling. Um, one of those honored um, <clears throat> to be named captain by my teammates, mm -hmm. uh, guys who look up to me and, and voted me to lead this team, and that's what I would do. Uh, lead the team the best way I know how. That's, by example and bringing the positive energy every day. I was going to say, what kind of leader are you? I'm that one. <laughs> You're that one. <laughs> yes, You're that one. Take me inside. Captains every now and then, or I believe it's every week, get a chance to meet with Bill Belichick behind closed doors. Yeah. What is that like? That's actually a pretty cool um, experience. Meeting. Yeah. Yeah. First time was last week, so I was, I was just there. Were you uh, nervous? Was, not so nervous. as kind. Of wanted to. Didn't really know what to expect, uh, but ready to expect everything. Um, so it was one of those like. I sat there, I listened, and uh, when he asked for my input, I, I said what I, what I needed to say. It's my pleasure to present the 20th Annual New England Patriots Ron Burton Community Service Award to defensive lineman Dietrich Wise, Jr. He won my dad's award, mm -hmm. Ron Burton Community Service Award. When you heard your name mentioned, how did it make you feel? It was a uh, very uh, surreal moment, honestly. It was kind of like one of those, I always like to guess who they're going to go with. Because you've been there before, mm -hmm. right? So like the last few years, I kind of listened to them. I'm like, all right, who is, who is this going to be? And I heard the first two things, and I was like, <laughs> OK, let me, let me hear it again. And then he, and then he goes and says the uh, third thing, and then the fourth thing, and then they say, no. I look at the screen and there's my face, and then I see cameras, and then I hear that music, that like, mm. that like, that classic music, and I was like, 
wow, this is, this is pretty cool. And uh, I was got real happy after that. And then I just walked up, walked up to the uh, podium. And not, only, not only did you get real happy, you got real emotional, right? Yeah. You mentioned your mom and dad. Yeah, I did. Uh, because uh, they're pillars in my, in my life. Um, they taught me everything I, I knew. Uh, when, and, and in terms of community service, like, I don't, we, my family and I, never do community service out of accolades or awards mm -hmm. or anything else like that, because that's not really what it's for. It's, it's to, whatever you do is to reach the people that you're reaching, mm -hmm. whether you're inspiring, motivating, educating, or just lending a hand, you know, that's kind of what the main thing about community service is. And um, I guess to be honored with uh, such a prestigious award was just phenomenal. And um, I remember once I got to my phone, they kind of already knew because they, they kind of like followed the picture page and they was like, oh my God, <laughs> you know, they was just very excited and stuff. Uh, but um, it was, it's like, I told my family to say the, the same thing. I was like, even though my name is on that award, that's a war for us, my whole family and I. Mm. So we all, when one person wins that award, we all win that award. And that's kind of what I told them. Well said, my friend. Congratulations. Thank you. Good luck in Pittsburgh. Thank you very much. Teachers Wise Junior, I guess we'll be back with more Patriots All Access right after this. Welcome back to Patriots All Access. Time to sit down and talk with the coach now. Coach Belichick joins me now after week one down in Miami. And a wise man once said, Coach, um, you have to learn how not to lose before you can learn how to win. Does that pretty much summarize week one for you guys down in Miami? Uh, well, I think we, we did some things that were winning football, played some winning football, but we, we made some mistakes. Uh, Miami took advantage of them, and uh, so it didn't turn out the way we hoped it would. The week together in Vegas, the week in Miami, can you use that as sort of, you know, something to help your team down the road as far as we bonded during those times and it paid dividends for us down the road? Oh, I think those are good practice weeks for us, both uh, on and off the field. So I th think they're productive. I think we uh, benefited from them. And um, so that's, we'll see, how, see what happens. But I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't do it any differently. I think that helped our football team and made us better. So glad we did it. All right, I've been sitting here a lot with you during Pittsburgh weeks, and uh, we're not talking about Ben Roethlisberger. It's kind of weird. We're talking about a guy you played back in 2018. I remember being out in Chicago calling that game, and Mitch Trubisky, he got to you a couple of plays, not only through the air, but with his legs. Spent some time in Buffalo. He's in Pittsburgh now, one of their captains. What do you see in Mitch's game now when you watch him on film as yeah, a Steeler? He's a big athletic guy and, and has, a, has a good, real good arm. Um, and, you know, good weapons, uh, good backs, good tight ends, good receivers, um, some good offensive linemen. So they're, they're a well-balanced offense and, and obviously very good on defense and, um, you know, a team that, that doesn't have to, usually doesn't have to score a lot of points to win because they don't give up many. All right, you're facing Mike Tomlin. you face faced a lot of Mike Tomlin teams over the years. 15 straight years without a losing season. What, what's the identity of Mike Tomlin type teams when you play those guys? Yeah, tough physical. Play good situational football, good smart football. Um, but yeah, I think especially when you go into Pittsburgh, you got to be ready for a, a physical game and uh, running the ball, playing playing good defense, tackling, kicking game. So, kind of, you know, you're from Pittsburgh. Yeah. You know what that you know what that Pittsburgh mentality is. The, the ace ticket Twitter question is going to be a good one. Plus, when we get there, we're not going to see the ketchup bottles. They took those darn ketchup bottles down <laughs> in the end zones. All right, now it's time for the ace ticket Twitter question of the week, and it comes from Chris S. Uh, you look at the Steeler helmet. On the other side that faces the camera, there's no logo on it. Do you know why the logo is only on one side? And it's one of the oddest helmets in the league, but I think it's one of the prettiest. It is. Yeah, I'm not really familiar with that. I think it probably might have something to do with the steel workers, but I'm not yeah, sure. So, so both my grandparents worked in the mill, my grandfathers. They had the mini helmet on one side. And I used to collect football cards, and I always asked my dad, Dad, why don't they have two logos? And he, he never knew that. I thought that was a reason, but it's actually Art Rooney, or going back to the early days with Art Rooney, he told the equipment manager, we need something on the helmet. So just slap a decal on. And I think it was cheap back in the day, way to save money. <laughs> they only put it on one side, it's like having one sock. So they kept it that way through tradition, and it's a pretty darn good tradition. But nobody ever gets that question right, including myself. All right, if you want to ask the coach a question, you have to follow the team on Twitter, 
at Patriots, hashtag at AskBB, Bellistrator with the Steelers. A lot of defensive looks, a lot of new guys there in the secondary, right? They, they do have some new players, and uh, they played very well defensively against uh, Cincinnati last weekend. Right. A big win for them. A lot of pressure, too. All right, more of Patriots All Access will return right after this, and then we'll have the Bellistrator for you. Coming up on All Access. 27 years in the making, we examine one of the most important relationships in franchise history. Working relationship, uh, you know, boss, owner, you know, player, it's a true friendship. It might not be the steel curtain, but Coach Belichick has the Steelers defense on his mind. Burrow makes the interception, runs it back for a touchdown. Um, that was a, a third of his first points right there. You're watching Patriots All Access. Patriots All Access is brought to you by Bank of America, the official bank of the New England Patriots. By AdCare, be recovery strong, speak up, reach out, ask for help. Call AdCare at 800-ALCOHOL. And by Gillette Labs with exfoliating bars. Effortless shave in one efficient stroke. Twenty-eight years ago, Robert Kraft and his family purchased the Patriots, beginning nearly three decades of unrivaled accomplishment. In his first season, Kraft inherited a young former number one overall pick at quarterback named Drew Bledsoe. Their relationship has developed from owner-player to mentor and friend. And we got a glimpse of that when Bledsoe invited his former boss to his winery earlier this year. The uh, Patriots select Drew Bledsoe, quarterback, Washington State University. Have somebody tell you that you're going to be the first pick in the NFL draft is, is a, uh, an extremely exciting situation. And Bledsoe, he drops straight back to throw. Up page, going for the whole thing. His man is open. Tension, touchdown. Patriots win. That was a thing of beauty. Bledsoe back to throw. Looks, floats to the end zone. Touchdown. The Patriots win. What a performance by the second year quarterback this afternoon. He came here and was part of the resurgence of football in the New England region. Well, first and foremost, I want to uh, express my gratitude to uh, the Kraft family and specifically to Robert Kraft. Back to throw, looks, fires, open, touchdown! Touchdown by Drew Bledsoe! This honor means more to me than you can imagine. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Too, too long. I've been trying to get him to come out for years and years. So where did you grow up? Yeah, just, yeah, I was right, lived right over there. And then, and then I'll show you when we come back to the airport, I'll drive you by the house that we lived in when I was in high school. Borleski Stadium, that was, uh, that's where it all happened when that's I was in high school. Play. Yep. Yeah, I was thinking, I flew out here. Yeah. Jo that was with Jonathan. Yeah. yeah, it was almost 27 years wedding. ago when you guys really? flew out for our wedding. Yeah. And then you got me, uh, and then you got us a great wedding griff when you uh, when you drafted Terry Glenn for us. Oh, God rest his soul. Right. And look, you threw, you guys broke a record. Yeah. You were he, over 100. He had over, he had over, he had, he, had, he, had a, he had over, yeah, and he only, and he missed two games. Oh, look, look how cool this is. He was kind enough to give me an opportunity to invest in his vineyards when he started uh, Double Back. Hi. Cheers. What an honor. Cheers. Thank you so much for thank you so much for making the uh, okay. the trip. One of my favorite stories from our wedding was that you, uh, you and Zolak uh, negotiated his contract, um, at the, I believe, at our wedding reception. Oh, you right. told him, you're like, all right, Zoe, why don't, you, uh, why don't you write down a number, and then I'm going to write down a number, and then we're going to pick something in between those two, and, uh, and like negotiated his contract on a napkin. The even funnier part was, and I don't know if you remember this or not, 
the next morning, I think you and Jonathan were leaving early. Yes. And I believe you woke Zoe up on the couch in the lobby of the hotel. <laughs> Which, at least he was in the hotel. Yeah, he did make it back to the hotel, but yeah, you negotiated his deal and then uh, found him passed out on the couch in the lobby of the hotel the next morning. I'm sure you were maybe second guessing the commitment at that point. That's a true story. Uh, we love Zoe. Zoe's, oh, we love Zoe. A lot of what we do and a lot of what we talk about as a business uh, ties back to what he's done in building the Patriots and to what they are and what they've become. Let's go, uh, let's go upstairs. When we built it, we wanted it to feel like it belonged here and like we wanted it to feel like it had um, been here for many, many years. And so we uh, brought in this old barn wood and we let this go all to rust. So we, we had the one vineyard, McQueen Vineyard on the top. The piece right next door became available, and uh, it was fairly soon after oh, you had always buy. Yeah, it was fairly soon. Property. It was fairly soon after you had uh, said that to me. I'm like, well, Josh, looks like we got to buy it. The boss said we got to buy contiguous property, so, so we did. I talk about him a lot with our team, and it was important for me to have him come see that a lot of what we've done is in, in some ways a tribute to him and what he's built. But I remember asking him, you know, at one point, like, you know, what's the one thing that separates you guys from everybody else? And he goes, it's not one thing, it's everything. We compete at everything and try to be best at concessions. I mean, you actually said this to me, and I don't know if you remember it, but like, we try to be the best at concessions. We try to be the best at parking. We try to be the best at salary cap management and training our players and coaching our players and all of that stuff. And it, um, that's uh, one of the major things that's, uh, um, that's you know, really allowed that unprecedented run of success continuously. Thanks, that's beautiful. I tell you, being here and seeing all of you and seeing what's come to fruition is pretty special. So you're working with good people. That's part of the key to life. And I think what Mara and Drew have done here is created something special that you all can be very proud to be associated with. So much of our team is so young um, that to have him show up and, and, and you know, talk about me the way that he did, like some of these people realize, oh, okay, yeah, you know, our boss, you know, actually, you know, did some shit back in the day. One of the reasons I bought the Patriots in 94 is because this guy was the number one pick and the quarterback there. He was the face of our franchise. And when you're a new owner coming into the NFL, there are a lot of challenges, and having him in our environment for nine years was the greatest thing for me coming in as a new owner, and it was a real privilege. And what he was saying, and what I hope you do here, every business we're in, we stress quality, because that's the differentiator. They realized that, you know, yeah, this guy's a, a real person, and also a really good person, right? It transcends, um, you know, a working relationship, a, you know, boss, owner, you know, player. It's a true friendship, and a, um, I tell them all the time, it's like, hey, you know, when you talk, I actually listen. Any successful endeavor is built around great culture, and uh, um, the Patriots have had that for a long time. It even has a name, the Patriot Way. And so with our company, we have very clearly defined values um, that we abide by. It makes things kind of simple sometimes, you know? You're like, okay, does this decision meet our core values? And if it doesn't, then we don't do it. I was so proud of him to see the team of people he's built and what he's done. And life is about special relationships. And he is in a unique category for me. I love him. And then the other thing that I've always just admired um, forever and ever is that you've been able to be so successful and uh, keep your soul intact and uh, I just love and admire that. Being exposed to people like you. down the middle and caught by Brown in traffic. Touchdown, Pittsburgh.
What's new about the Pittsburgh Steelers? For the first time in 18 years, a new starting quarterback for the Steelers. Mitch Trubisky takes over a Steeler team in a bit of a transition. From New England is New England. I love and respect the defined division of labor and, and, and the mode of operation in terms of how they function. We function in similar ways here, and so um, it's cool. It, it should make for a really interesting game. It'll be two trains on a track, and um, that's what football is about. Welcome back to Patriots All Access. Time now for the Bellistrator. It's Steeler Week, Week 2. Coach, taking a look at their defense here. Cincinnati's got a lot of skilled people. Uh, we saw the year they had with Joe Burrow. What did we see on Week 1? Well, we saw Pittsburgh really uh, turn the ball over and uh, make you know five big plays uh, defensively, plus a lot of other good ones. Uh, this first one is, uh, is Fitzpatrick, and, and they're in a, a rotated coverage here, cover two, Fitzpatrick playing deep, and he makes a a very good play here where he drives on the, on the ball there on, from Burrow, makes the interception, runs it back for a touchdown. Um, so it was a, a third of Pittsburgh's points right there. Seven you give up right there, it's one thing you don't want to do. All right, moving on here. Yeah, so this is uh, Highsmith down here, Watt up on top. Uh, you know, both of them had big days against uh, the Bengals. And, and here the Bengals actually uh, have it picked up, but uh, Highsmith kind of turns the corner, uh, dips there, and, and strip sacks Burrow. So another big turnover. Remember Nikovic, um, you know, whether it was Van Noy on the edge, I said you always told them worst place you want to be is behind a quarterback. Get your butts back downhill. That's pretty much what you saw there. Yeah, he really, uh, Highsmith did a nice job of turning yeah. that corner tightly. Yeah. Um, and, you know, here's a good play uh, from the Steelers. They're in a uh, man coverage here. This is Sutton and looks like, you know, looks like the Bengals have a chance yep. here, you know, throwing this post. and. Sutton comes in there, makes a very athletic play, goes up and, and really makes an excellent catch and you know, turns it over again. Um, so that's one in man. And then um, this play is a, a zone play here, fourth and six. Uh, so uh, this is Witherspoon playing the, the nickel position. You see he gets a real nice break on the ball here in zone coverage, reading Burrow's eyes. Burrow's trying to look him off a little bit here and he comes back and you know, Witherspoon just slices in there goes up, makes a makes a good catch there, and, and uh, turns it over. So um, interceptions, strip sacks. They play excited too, you see it right there. Oh, you bet. And so here here's the game, um, minute 56, fourth and goal on the one, Bengals are down by six. Uh, touchdown, extra point, gives them the lead. Um, so fourth and goal on the one, uh, they put Chase inside here, and uh, Chase kind of wins, wins that corner route, looks like he's open there. Um, but Sutton really makes a good play, good play on this. He he comes off of his man, sees the throw, and uh, is able to is able to just come up there and and uh, tip the ball out yeah. Chase's hands, uh, who's looks like he's going to be open here for a touchdown. Gets the jam, sort of middles it there. Yep, yeah. and uh, does a nice job here. You can see the the height that Sutton gets up with, gets his fingers on the ball and and breaks it up. So that really is the game winning play though on a fourth and one on one. That's something dangerous you know, when you're down in a tight because quarterback's going to make that decision. You're going to have a little more room to play with. Maybe you could bait him into something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's good. Very good defensive football team. Turnovers, big fourth down stop. They had a big, big win against the Bengals on the road. And yep. I'm sure they'll, uh, they'll be humming there. And, uh, Let's be another humdinger. Fourth yeah. quarter, right? They play renegade. Got to be ready for that one by sticks. <laughs> yeah. All right, coach. Good luck against Steelers this week. Get Thanks, back on so. track. Appreciate All right, it. there you go. There's your Bellistrator. More Patriots All Access will return right after this. Patriots All Access is brought to you by Putnam Investments. Putnam Investments and the New England Patriots. Proud partners committed to an active game plan on the field and off. By Pepsi. Patriots watching better with Pepsi. And by Dan O'Brien Auto. Come in to any Dan O'Brien Auto Group store today and get your awesome protection plan. Keeping it awesome. responsibility is to make sure that everyone has a chance to have access to good health care. I think this program that we started to bring emergency rooms out into the community to people that didn't feel they had proper access 
gives them an opportunity to be cared for just like anyone else. And it not only saves their lives, but extends their lives. And if it wasn't for Dr. Green, Dr. Silk, Dr. Babu, and everybody at the Craftmobile, even Robert Kraft and his son, um, it w I wouldn't be possible to be right here where I'm at standing up today. Welcome back, everyone, to our Bob's Just Conference Studios, back with our two experts, Mike Reese and Paul Perillo. Hey, with all the negativity, because there's a lot of it, Right? Yeah. Temperature of this football team right now. What is it? Yeah. You know what I love is the ability in the NFL, Mike, to have uh, just the wild overreactions week to week. It's 17 snapshots, and I think you get a chance in in this league, unlike the others, that it's just such you know a marathon. These are week to week. That's right. so all we have to talk about. So right now. Patriots can't move the ball, can't score points. They had seven points. Only one team in all of football scored less, Mike. So, you know, where exactly they are, I think they're, they're in a little bit of a crisis of confidence. I think they need some good yeah. stuff to happen on Sunday, sort of get over the, the malaise that the offense has been in. And from the big picture, think back to the way last season ended, the way the spring and training camp went, not too much positive vibes coming out of there. Mm -hmm. um, I think they need a big-time performance. Sunday here because of that. And you don't want to see that negativity um, sort of seep into the locker room and get to the player's psyche. All right, I'm going with initials. K.B. Kendrick Bourne. Yeah. What's the story with Kendrick Bourne? Yeah, it's an odd one. Uh, you know, when he's sort of had, you know, a really tumultuous summer. And we've seen him on and off the practice field. We, we know about all the incidents yeah. involving Carolina. So. Uh, you know, he didn't play in that Panthers game in the preseason, and really right now it looks like he's trying to find a way to get a role. I, I would like to see a little bit more Kendrick Bourne and a little bit less Devontae Parker. Yeah. I know those guys don't necessarily match up the same spot all the time. I like the idea of Aguilar and Bourne giving a little bit more speed and, no uh, you know, explosiveness to the offense. Uh, but, you know, I'm sure Bill has his reasons, and we just yeah. haven't seen a lot of Kendrick Bourne. And I think it's important to point out that we have blind spots covering the team, that we're not in the meetings, we're mm -hmm. not behind the scenes. Because um, if it was just about football, like Paul, you're talking about, I find it hard to believe that the coaching staff would think playing Kendrick Bourne for just two snaps in the season opener was the best decision for the team based on X's and O's. So it's about a lot of things sometimes so it's bigger that, than that. that we have blind spots right. to in Good terms point. of, um, you know, Things behind the scenes. Well, you mentioned blind spots, but speaking of spots, what's the spot the Patriots are in right now? Are they in a tough spot going into Pittsburgh? Yeah, not going to be a picnic going into that uh, football environment in Pittsburgh. Not an easy place to play. Their home opener, but I I'm going to sort of button hook Mike a little bit here, Love and I'm going to I'm going to accentuate the positive. I'm going to play your role. <laughs> I, I, I think when you look at it, it's you know it's not a scary offense. Pittsburgh doesn't have a lot of firepower. They're trying to go to Mitch Trubisky. I think it's going to be a transition. They're running back Najee Harris, terrific player, banged up a little bit with a bad ankle. So uh, I don't think this is a team that you, you're going to expect to put up 35, 40 points. So it might be an opportunity for the Patriots offense to punch and counter punch and get involved in a low scoring rock fight. It's their home opener. You're going to see all those terrible towels going. We'll find out about the Patriots mental toughness. Mm. Just can't turn the ball over, guys. I mean, turn it over three times like they did against Miami. They do that in Pittsburgh. It'll be over quick. And Pittsburgh's missing one of their best players. Yeah, easy way to avoid those turnovers, Mike. No T.J. Watt. Uh, he is a turnover machine. 22 and a half sacks last year. Uh, so not having him on one side and you saw the impact that he had on Cincinnati. He just requires so much attention from that offensive line. Uh, he's on one side. You saw Coach Belichick highlight this earlier. He gets one sack. Alex Highsmith gets three sacks mm -hmm. on the other side. Nine quarterback pressures. You can't afford to do that now. So you, yeah. you have to sort of, uh, you know, treat Highsmith like he's the, the top dog. And pair that up where I would say the Patriots showed some vulnerability last mm -hmm. week in Miami on the offensive line. A couple runaway rushers where there was a late blitz look. It looked like Trent Brown didn't get out to, to block the safety. So if you're Pittsburgh, Mike Tomlin, Brian Flores over there knows the Patriots a little bit. You're trying to dial that stuff up. Right. But without Watt, you, you lose a little firepower. So with all that being said, prediction time. I'm going to give you a, a little positivity here, Steve. I'm I need going to go it. with a low scoring, just grind it out kind of a game, kind of a late season divisional game yeah. type atmosphere to this one, even though we're in week two. Patriots 16 13. I was going to, I was going to flip this coin, figuring Paul was going Steelers. Right. But since you went Patriots, 
I'm not gonna go against you because I don't want to go down. <laughs> o- I don't want to go 0-2 on the season. Give me the Patriots, 20 to 17. All right, guys, great job, great stuff as usual. That'll do it for this week's edition of Patriots All Access. For Mike Reese and Paul Perillo, I'm Steve Burton. Have a great week, everybody.